theme. Normally we come and talk about the Lord Jesus Christ, but this morning I'm coming to talk about the devil. Why not? He's our enemy. He's the one we got to defeat in life. He's the one we got to overcome. And uh, I'm reading from Ezekiel this morning. And in Ezekiel, uh, he's known as the king of Tyre. The king of Tyre is Satan himself. Okay, so we're reading from verse 12 of Ezekiel, chapter 28. If you want to follow it. God spoke to Ezekiel. He says, Thus saith the Lord, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Now, is that how you've seen the devil? That's how God created him. He created him. He is the seal of perfection. He is full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was covering, was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamonds, beryl, oxen and jasper, sapphire, turquoise and emeralds with gold. The workmanship of your timbles and pipes was prepared for you the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers you were the anointed cherub who covers. I establish you. You were the holy. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in the ways the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. By abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing, out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You, corrupt, you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. Mm -hmm. Satan was a cherub in heaven, God's worship leader. He is the one who led worship in heaven. He said his beauty, he had emeralds built within his body that reflected the light. Lucifer means he is a light bearer. And in heaven, with the glory of God, these emeralds, these stones, these sapphires would all reflect different colours. Now if you read about the gates in heaven, you'll find they're made of these each one's made of these precious stones, all reflecting the light of God. But Lucifer was his light bearer and he was reflecting. And he led worship in heaven. He'd go and he'd lead the worship with the angels and he'd get them all praising God and the place would be filled with the glory of God. And Lucifer was the worship leader. His divine purpose was to worship and praise God. He said he was full of wisdom, full of beauty. You know, that's not the way I picture the devil. You know, if the devil gets out of anybody, he usually makes a mess of his money. Yeah. And you know, he makes a mess of them so that his beauty shines greater. Yeah. And you know, he had a seal of perfection all about him. In Isaiah chapter 6 it says, And the glory would fill the temple. The angels would sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And he would lead them into worship. He would lead them into praise. It said his body was like strings of timbrels. And he, within his body he had instruments of timbrels and wind instruments within his body that would perform music. And this is how God created him. So no wonder he wanted to take music and arts and these things to deceive the world. Because music and arts was his thing. And you know, he was a he was an artist before God and he was created for that very purpose. But when one day he chose not to be a cherub anymore, but he became a devil. And what happened? Pride rose in his heart. 
He looked at himself and said, I am beautiful. I am handsome. And I'm not going to lead people to worship God anymore. I'm going to have them worship me. Because oh, I am great. I am beautiful. And he said, sin, iniquity, entered his heart. Rebellion came up within him and said, I'm not going to worship God anymore. I'm going to get these angels to worship me. At that precise moment, he changed. You know, friends, sometimes we can slip up. We can sin. We can make mistakes. And God can forgive that. But when we let pride rise up in our hearts and say, I am greater than God. I am greater than the cause of God in my life. That's when God, God can't help us anymore. Mm. And you know, it's pride that proves Satan out of heaven. You know, we know the archangel Michael warred against him in heaven and threw him out. It said a third of the angels went with him. Mm. Now, I didn't realize until I was looking at this last night that a lot of those angels were thrown into the cast of, cast of, uh, cast into hell. But there's some of them that become evil spirits across this land. So, you know, when we see people with evil spirits, we think, how many evil spirits is there across this land? Just imagine, that was only one third of the angels that was in heaven. And also there's a lot of them locked up in the pit of hell. So, I mean, more angels is there in heaven. On God's side, yeah. on yeah. our side, yeah. ministering yeah. angels to his people. <coughs> caring for you, watching over you every day of your life. You know, friends, the way it gets in perspective, you know, a third were thrown out with Satan, but yet two thirds were still in heaven. And, you know, they're ministering angels for each one of us. <coughs> but it makes us realise the importance of praise and worship. Because, you know, the minute Satan fell, God said, oh, I'm going to choose my people worship me instead so he desires your praise and your worship and that's why he wants you to praise him and you to worship him because you've replaced the devil and God says you're my children you're the ones I love to hear you're the ones I want to hear you sing my praises I want you to hear you tell me how great I am because you say as you bless me as you praise me I'm going to bless you and you know, we bless God, he lifts us up. And he lifts up our spirits, he lifts us up. Can we praise God this morning that we are free within our spirit to give God praise and to give God worship? And we can give God glory and give all God honor because as we worship him, that's the purpose that we are here on earth. That's the purpose that we live. He didn't save us just to save us. He saved us that we could be his children and that we could worship and lift him up. In 2 Peter 9, you read this verse, but you're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hey. You're a special people. You're a privileged people because God has got his hand upon your life. And the more you praise him, the more you worship him, the more he seeks after you. He saved us that we may show forth his praise. Can we be satisfied? That we're, are we happy that we're satisfied and saved in Jesus this morning Hallelujah. have we got peace within our hearts because you know that's what God brings us and sometimes we lose and we forget what it is not to have the peace of God in our lives because you know when you haven't got Jesus and you've got that what's life all about when you find Jesus you find the purpose of life and he's satisfied us in our hearts we got to be thankful this morning that we don't desire drugs. We haven't got to desire the lust of this world. Hallelujah. We haven't got to desire the things that man is craving for. You know, sometimes I stop and I watch people. They seem to fly past our place on these great big tractors and these great machines. 
It's like they can't go fast enough because the sun's shining for two minutes. And only some days a week. And then I think, they still can't go fast enough. <laughs> and I said, what's, what's, man's, what's man chasing after? What's life all about? And sometimes it makes us stop to wonder, you know, what is the purpose of life? What is driving these people? Is it money? Is it success? Is it to be somebody? But you know, that's what the world is chasing after. They want to be recognized to be somebody. When we belong to Jesus, we begin to find ourselves in Him. When we find Him worshiping and praising, He brings up peace and satisfaction into our hearts. We're called to praise Him. Praise is our purpose. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Everything that has breath, praise God. You know, if we look at Genesis chapter 2, we find that God breathed in man that he might live. And you know, before Jesus left this earth, he looked back and he said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Wait for the breath of God to come within you. And when you've got the breath of God within you, you can live. And you'll know the fullness of God. And you know, God wants us to know the fullness of him this morning. He wants the breath of God to come into our lives so that we can give praise back and glory back to him. We were washed in the blood of the Lamb. We were washed so that we could praise him. We could worship him. We could give him glory. If we praise him, he promises to fight our battles. He promises to supply our needs. He promises to meet us at our point of desperation. Friends, whatever you're facing this week, you praise God and God's promises are for you. He'll meet you right at your point of need. Everything you need. He'll give you great success in life. And if you already done so, thank him. Praise him. Give him glory. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, we find King David. He took a bunch of guys and he is going to go down and bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. He took a brand new cart and some oxen and off they went. They got the Ark of the Covenant, they loaded it on the cart. And as they were coming up the road, the old oxen stumbled and the Ark of the Covenant rocked on the cart. Two guys reached out, grabbed the Ark so it didn't fall off. The second that they touched that Ark, they dropped dead. And David said, what's going on? What's going on? Why? Why have these guys died? We're bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. And they decided to leave the Ark of the Covenant in Obed's house. And when he left it in Obed's house, it said Obed and everything he had was blessed by God. And David saw that Obed was blessed because he got the Ark of the Covenant resting in his house. So he said, we got to get that Ark of the Covenant and bring it back to Jerusalem. <laughs> but this time, he did it God's way. He said, we're going to take the priest and they're going to carry the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. And we're going to bring it back to Jerusalem. And that's the way God had designed for the Ark of the Covenant to be carried. And as they're bringing it back into Jerusalem, David was so excited that the presence of God was coming back to Jerusalem. They said he threw off his clothes and all the animals were living around him. And he danced before the God. He danced with all his might. He was so happy that the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, was coming back to Jerusalem. And he danced with all his might. Until his wife looked at the window. <laughs> what on earth are you doing? You embarrass me. Look at the state of you. And she criticised him. She ridiculed him. And he said, sorry dear, so much as I love you, I love God. Yeah. And he said, we've got the presence of God coming back to Jerusalem. And she said, you embarrass me in front of my friends. And he said, she despised him in her heart. Yeah. Friends, Women can have a lot of influence, a lot of power over you, and they rob the joy out of your life. 
But David said, no, 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 no there. I'm a worship leader. I started on the mountains before I ever knew you. With my heart, I praise God. With my heart, I gave him glory. And within my heart, I may have messed up a few times. But God has forgiven me. Amen. And I'm going to worship my God. And I said, he danced and he danced all these nights. He said, I want to live on the pastures, look after the sheep. But God called me and made me king. <laughs> he said, I was out there once and he said, a bear came along. And God gave me a coat of a bear skin. Uh -huh. And then he divided me a rug with a lion skin. And he said, then he provided me with a head of a giant which I swapped with my wife. That's the God that David was dancing for. The one that gave him victories. The one that gave him overcoming power because he knew that in God he had a faith and he had confidence and he had served a miracle working God. And that lion was killed and that bear was killed and that giant was killed because he had a faith and a confidence in God. And he said, I'm going to praise my God with all my might, with everything I am. And sometimes, friends, we look at life and we find people thinking that if I dance before the Lord, I'll look stupid. If I clap and praise God, they'll call me a happy clapper. Hallelujah. Now, friend, I'll tell you what, <laughs> Satan wants to put you down so you don't praise him. You don't praise your God. He wants you to be silent. He wants you to be quiet. He wants you to be dignified. God said, forget your dignity. Just worship me. Praise me with all your heart. Praise me with everything you are. And he said, I will meet you at your point of need. I'll be your God and I'll be your king. He said, God made me king and I'm going to praise him. Remember that old song we used to sing? Rachel loved this. Put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice and sing. Praise in the spirit and with understanding. Come glorify the King. Hey. You know what God wants in our hearts? Put on the garment of praise. The spirit of heaviness. He'll lift it off us. Praise God. I said David sinned many, many times. We, we all look at David and all his faults. I'm glad the Bible won't write about me. <laughs> <laughs> Expose all my faults to everyone. But you know, yet <coughs> there was times when he came back to God and he said he repented and he said, God forgive me. Yeah. And you know, sometimes we gotta come back to God, we gotta say, God forgive me. Yeah. And the only thing that'll keep us from God is our pride. Yeah. And we can be like Satan. We can become too full of ourselves that we're too important to say sorry to God. That's a dangerous place to be, friends. We're open before God. God's ready to accept us, to love us and forgive us. Hallelujah. Lucifer was cast out of heaven and a third of the angels was cast out with him. Friends, the danger is if we don't praise God, we'll stop a third of the people around us worshiping God also. You know, our children are watching us. Can we come and worship our God? Can we can we sit on the tractor and sing our hearts out? Hallelujah. Or are we ashamed to be seen to worship our God? You know, God says, don't be ashamed to worship me in public. Don't be ashamed to be seen praising or praying to your God. Because the world around you is watching. And you know, at the end of the day, they're all seeking something. Yeah. Is it success? Is it money? Is it life? Is it nice brand new car or a big house this is what drives the world but at the end of the day they're looking for peace in their hearts yes. Yes. church we've got a great god yes. Yes. don't lose sight yes. of why satan was thrown out of heaven yes. it was his pride yes. you know why is the devil angry just see what he wants had yeah. yes. and see what he's got now yes. he knows his future yes. he knows he's he's down for a lost eternity yes. But we got a God. Yeah. He said, You deserved it. Yeah. I gave you everything. And 
you threw it back in my face. Mm. And sometimes we throw things back in God's face. Mm. Yeah. But let's just allow our pride hold us down there. And say, God, I'm sorry, I'm coming back to you. Mm. You're a great God. Mm. There's three things, things about worship I just want to finish with. Is first thing, if we don't praise him, we get cast down. When we don't, can't praise him, we get heavy hearted. We get depressed. And how much mental health and depression do we see around the world today? People have lost sight of praising God. God says, you start worshiping me, and your pressure, depression will disappear. You worship me, and I'll lift you out of that pit. And I'll put your feet on the miry clay. Second point is, if we don't praise God, we get bound in chains. We go back to where we once were. Mm. Remember Peter when he, he, he thought that Jesus had died and he failed God and he lost. He said, I'm going back fishing. Mm. And that's what we do. We go back to our old way of life. Mm. And we get bound up like we always used to be. When we worship God, when we come before God and say, God, accept me for who I am. I've messed up again. He said, I'll break those chains. I'll set you free. And I'll give you life again. And the third point is what I've just been saying. Lucifer refused to worship God. And the third of the angels fell with him. God don't want us to lose sight of worshipping him. Because our families are watching. Our families are seeing what you're standing for. And you might think, but they don't care. But deep down they do. Mm. And the day he says, Mum and Dad had a faith. Mum mm. and Dad has got something they can hang on to. And when the chips is down, where do they turn? They come back to Mum and Dad. And Mum and Dad's going to say, I can take you back to Jesus. Mm. I can take you back to square one. Yeah. Where we can say, Father God, we love you. We worship you. We exalt you. In your king. Oh, we got a great God. Yes. Uh, yeah. You keep rejoicing. We keep praising him. And he'll keep meeting your needs. Amen. 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 God.